What's up, my artistic friends? We're gonna start a new drawing today, which means we need to start off with a little bit of discussion about our elements of art, as well as our principles of design. So let's start with those elements of art. There are seven of these elements of art. Please repeat them after me. Line, shape, color, texture, value, space, form. In our drawing that we're gonna work on today, we're gonna start off with some lines. We're gonna use those lines to create some shapes and we're gonna use a, that special line, that one that's called a horizon line, to help us create some space to separate our ground from our sky so that we can see where one stops and the other begins. And then we will use some color to help us fill our space, to help us use all of the space on our page. That being said, that brings us to our principles of design. Again, please repeat these seven words after me. Balance, unity, pattern, rhythm, movement, emphasis, contrast. So emphasis is the very, very first thing that we're going to be drawing and dealing with today. Now in the story that we read today, it was about how tigers got their stripes. So a tiger is going to be our emphasis. It's going to be the main thing. A couple things that we can do to make people pay attention to our emphasis. We can put it in the middle. We can draw it really big. We can use unique colors, colors we don't see anywhere else. Now on that emphasis, on that emphasis, we are also going to create some pattern, some repetition, something, some lines, shapes, or colors that repeat their order. So that being said, let's go ahead and jump to a blank piece of paper and get started on our drawing. What's up guys? So we're gonna start in on the emphasis of this drawing first. To do that, we need a pencil and we need to make sure we have an eraser because we're gonna be drawing some shapes and some overlapping shapes are gonna cross over each other. And we need to be able to go back later and clean that up and, and take out the lines that we don't need. Now the tiger is going to be our emphasis. So we wanna make sure it's in the middle and we wanna make sure that we draw big and you wanna make sure that you draw lightly so that when we need to erase parts, we can erase them completely. So first thing we wanna do is we wanna start with the, the main part of the tiger's body. And we're gonna use a shape that looks kinda of like a potato for this. Um, we're gonna have our tiger be running. So we wanna have a kind of a big bulge here and then have it get smaller as it goes back. So that's gonna be our body. Now we're gonna to go to the head. We wanna come up, come out and make his nose and his big old sharp tiger teeth, give him some triangles for some ears, and it might not be the world's most perfect tiger, but it's going to do. I may have gotten this part a little bit too big on mine, that's okay. Um, so next thing we need some legs. Now with our legs, our legs are going to overlap each other, so we're going to have one leg in front of the other. So our front leg, the one that's on this side of our body, we want to start kind of in the middle, come down, and then out, and then we want to make our paw. Then we'll come over here, we're going to this one, we're just going to come straight out, make our paw. Now notice we don't see the whole leg there. It is over being overlapped by this one. So I'm going to come to the back of the tiger. And we're going to use uh, kind of like a triangle to start with. And then we're going to add two straight lines. And then we got that back foot, that back paw. And then we're going to do another one. Same shapes. We're just showing a little bit less of the shapes. And then we need a tail. And your tail doesn't have to go the same way as mine. Now this leaves us with some lines that we need to get rid of. So we want to go into the inside of this. And everywhere we've got these lines that we don't need, we want to get rid of them. 
any of these extra ones so that we're left with the outline shape of our tiger. Okay? So next thing we need here is a horizon line to separate, to show us where the ground stops and where the sky starts. So I'm going to put mine near the middle of my page. Doesn't have to be the exact middle, but somewhere close to the middle. Now at this point, we want to work a little bit on our background. So where do tigers live usually? You might know. Did I hear somebody say in the jungle? Yeah, that's right. So in the jungle, we have lots of trees. That's normally a thing that we see a lot. So let's go into our background and add some trees to this. So go ahead, pause the video, draw some trees in your background, and then come back to the video. So there we have, I got some trees in my background now. Now I'm ready to come back to my emphasis because we got to give this tiger some stripes. So when we do that, you can use any kind of line that you want to make your stripes. You can use a zigzag, you can use a wavy line, you can use a curved line, you can use any kind of line you want. But when we make these lines, we have to be sure that they touch the top and the bottom of our tiger. So you guys help me out. So if I put a line like this, that's fine, because it touches both sides. But if I do it like this, does that line touch both the sides of my tiger? No, it does not. So we want to make sure, just take our time and be careful and be sure that we're making our lines come all the way across the tiger. Top to bottom or side to side, whichever one the case may be, whichever way you choose to do it. And whichever way you choose to do it is fine, as long as, again, we make sure that we're doing what we need to do. There's my stripe. So, question for you. In the real world, in nature, what kind of colors do we see on tigers? Did you say orange and black? Yeah, we also sometimes see tigers that are white and black. Now, if you want to do your tiger orange and black like a tiger would normally be, that's fine. You can do it that way. But you don't have to. If you would like to pick two other colors, you know, any other colors you want, you could also use them to make your tiger. I think I'm going to make my tiger... I think I'm going to do my tiger with green and yellow. And there we have our tiger pattern. You know, mine goes yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow, green. It repeats and continues to repeat in that order. So that leaves us now with the background left to color. So I'm going to start with my sky now. I know a lot of times, a lot of the times, we just kind of reach for a blue crayon when we do the sky. And if you want to do that, that is absolutely fine. But also, it's worth considering that the sky is not always blue. Sometimes the sky is gray, or sometimes the sky is black or purple, or at sunrise and the sunset we have the, the oranges and the pinks and the yellows and the lavenders and the periwinkles and all those wonderful colors. So if you want to make your sky blue, that's fine. You can do that. But just remember that your sky does not always have to be blue. I think I'm going to do my sky with a purple. So choose whatever color you want for your sky, and let's go ahead and get that knocked out. So that finishes up my sky, my, my nighttime sky. Now, because it's nighttime, I'm going to be using a lot of very, very dark colors in my drawing. But bear in mind that you don't have to do it that way. Um, you can make your trees bright green and brown and everything else. My colors are going to be having a lot of blue mixed in again because I want it to look like nighttime. Um, but at this point, we want to go ahead, we want to knock out the trees, and we want to finish the rest of the ground at the bottom so that we have used all of the space on the page. And that should look something like this. And there, my friends, we have our finished tiger. Um, we've got the whole space covered. We have our emphasis in the middle. It's big and has unique colors. 
we've used all of the space on our page. We've created space by using this horizon line. And that, my friends, is a finished drawing. Good luck to you, and as always, my friends, happy arting.